the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Ambassador Haley, thanks for coming on once again. Thanks so much, Jake. So today you confronted your Russian counterpart on the U.N. Security Council about Russia's support for the Assad regime uh, and their continued vetoes against any U.N. resolution about Assad. You said this. Take a listen. Russia continues to cover for a leader who uses chemical weapons against his own people. Assad continues to do these things because they know Russia will continue to cover for them. So I guess, Ambassador, my question is, you've been a very forceful advocate against the brutality we've seen from the Assad regime and Russia being a patron of it. But beyond the tough talk, is there anything that the Trump administration is prepared to, to do to get the Russians to cooperate in terms of sanctions or anything else? Well, first of all, let's look at the actual situation. I mean, there are people dying by the day because they're not getting humanitarian aid that they need because the Assad regime is keeping it out and not allowing it to get in. Now, today, the Russians basically said, look, the reason that this is happening is because they need all that medical care for the for the military, well, the military doesn't need baby formula. The military doesn't need diapers. The military doesn't need dialysis treatment. That is what they're keeping from the people who are in need. And so what you've got is a regime who's saying, you either bow down to us or we're gonna starve you to death. And Russia is allowing this to happen. And there was a report released today about how awful the humanitarian issue was. And Russia then criticized the report. But at the end of the day, the international community needs to put all eyes on Russia all the pressure on Russia, because every day that people die in Syria, it's all on Russia's hands in that in that way. And so what we're doing is we're gonna continue to push. We did have a Security Council resolution uh, a few weeks ago, and Russia was the only one that vetoed it. So they're standing on an island. So we'll continue to take it and push it as best we can and see what we need to do. But no plans right now for any additional sanctions against Russia for this barbarity that they are supporting. We are continuing to talk about the issue, and I think we'll handle it accordingly. I want to get your reaction to some new CNN polls out just minutes ago. Take a look at these numbers about how Americans view Russia now compared to 2014. 41% say Russia is friendly. That's almost double the number from three years ago. And when you dive down at just Republicans, it's a huge leap. In 2014, 16% of Republicans said Russia is an ally and a friendly nation. Now it's 56% of Republicans mm -hmm. say that. I, I don't think it's any uh, mystery that, that one of the reasons likely for that is that President Trump has said very, very positive things about Russia until about three weeks ago. This must alarm you that your own party seems to have such a different view of Putin than you do. It doesn't alarm me at all. If you look at what the president has done, he has done an incredible job at the foreign relations side of all of our issues. And so what we've said with Russia is, look, if we can work with them, especially on terrorism efforts, we're going to do that. But if they do something wrong, we're going to call them out on it. So it doesn't mean they have to be a friend or a foe. It means we work with them when we can. And when we can't work with them, we, stay, we say the truth. Do you think Russia is an ally or a friendly nation? I think Russia is an ally when they want to be, and I think they're not an ally when they don't want to be. And I think that um, the days that they're an ally, I will work with them every day that I can, and the days that they're not with us, I'll continue to call them out. Another interesting poll number, um, when asked about the likelihood of the Trump campaign and Russians had improper contact, more than 70 percent of Americans polled said it was somewhat likely, very likely, or extremely likely. That is a lot of Americans. Um, I know that you were not part of the campaign, um, but as somebody who obviously has a loud, incredible voice, don't you think the Trump administration, uh, it would behoove them to be more transparent about everything they know to put any of these concerns to rest? I've really stayed out of that, Jake, because I wasn't part of the campaign, so I can't give any sort of factual information on that. And it's not involved in my world over at the United Nations. No one else is talking about it. And so I've really kind of stayed away from all of that and, and stayed out of that D.C. chatter. We're getting word that uh, the U.S. Uh, is sending more troops to Afghanistan. This on the heels of uh, these strikes, 59 Tomahawk missiles against the Assad regime in Syria, dropping the Moab against ISIS in Afghanistan. There are now more U.S. soldiers on the ground in Syria and Iraq and extended military operations in Yemen uh, and in Africa. It, it seems as though the United States is engaged militarily more around the globe now than when President Trump first took office. Um, do you think that that in any way is a contradiction from how he 
talked about America first and how he talked about disentangling the United States from these interventions abroad. Well, I can tell you what the international community is saying is they're so happy to see the United States lead again. And I think what we're doing is trying to make sure that any scenario that could cause harm to Americans, we're making sure we keep it stable. We keep it at bay and we make sure that we control the situation. And I think when you look at the fact that Secretary Mattis went to Afghanistan, he very much was trying to look and see what we needed to do to stabilize the area. When you see what we're doing in North Korea, those plans are all in place so that we can protect Americans, whether it's on military bases or whether it's here at home. And so I think what you've seen is a president who in a short amount of time has really shown leadership in the international community in a way we haven't seen in a long time. And I will tell you, there is a huge sigh of relief coming out of the international community to see America lead again. So it's, it's really being taken very well. Let's turn to North Korea just yesterday, uh, Secretary of Defense uh, Mattis, uh, Secretary of State Tillerson, and the Director of National Intelligence, Dan Coats, put out a joint statement. It said, quote, we remain prepared to defend ourselves and our allies. Do you think it's likely that the U.S. is headed for a military confrontation with Kim Jong-un and his regime? Well, I can tell you I've been in the conversations with the Nas National Security Council in terms of what we're going to do with North Korea. And it really is, it's all scenarios are on the table, so it really is all up to North Korea. Um, based on what North Korea does, we have a plan for every one of those scenarios. And I think that, um, you know, what we have tried to say to North Korea is we're not looking to pick a fight, but don't give us a reason to have one. And so it's now up to North Korea. What I will tell you is we have seen unpre unprecedented great partnership with China in the fact that they have really put the pressure on North Korea. We're encouraging them to continue the pressure on North Korea because that is the one country that can get them to move. And I think that that goes back again to President Trump's foreign policy relationships that he's developing. The new relationship he has with China is pretty amazing. And the idea that we were for example, the Syrian resolution that we had a couple of weeks ago, the idea that we could pull China off of Russia when they had been with them several times before really is a testament to how these foreign relations are working out very strongly in the U.S. advantage. Speaking of uh, foreign relations, the White House is trying to decide right now whether uh, the U.S. should pull out of the Iranian nuclear deal. What kind of feedback and pushback are you getting from U.S. allies with whom the Obama administration negotiated that agreement, which President Trump has said, of course, was the worst deal ever signed? Would they object if the U.S. withdrew? I, you know, I think there's a lot of different views about the Iran deal um, from all of the ally nations and, and otherwise is what we're hearing is they're all wondering exactly what we're going to do. But what we're focused on is what just happened and what President Obama did with that Iran deal was he just basically strengthened the, sp the um, one state that sponsors terrorism. And he just took all the sanctions off of the country that continues to cause the most havoc, whether it's Syria, whether it's Iraq, any place around the world, you look at Iran and you see there's bad influence. And being that state sponsor of terrorism is something that we don't want to reward. And he just rewarded bad behavior. So it's a matter of looking at what happened. And President Obama said, I'm going to kick this can down the road and wait and let another president handle it. And what President Trump's saying is, let's analyze this. I don't want to put this on someone else's plate. We need to figure out what to do with it. Do you have a recommendation? Do you think the U.S. should withdraw from, the, from that treaty? I think that they need to continue discussions, and that's something that I know that the National Security Council we're all continuing to talk about. But I will tell you, we need to look at the safety of the international community. We need to look at what this does and how this empowers Iran to continue the violent acts that we know that they do, to continue to support terrorism in the way that they do. And we need to really decide, do we want a nuclear Iran? Because that's something very dangerous when you think about their ties to terrorism. All right, Ambassador Nikki Haley, thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you again. Okay. Okay, thanks, Jake.